We have been looking at old maps and old books. Looking at the amazing Leodis website. Visiting the fantastic Armley Mills Industrial Museum. Going on a trip to see the oldest buildings in Burley. Learning how to interview people to make this film. We think Burley is a brilliant place and we want to tell you all about it. Two hundred years ago, Burley was a quiet little village outside Leeds, surrounded by fields and farms. There were no cars or buses. People walked or used horses and carts. Most families were poor and lived in small cottages. Though there were some big mansions nearby where the rich people lived. The nearby river and canal made Burley the perfect place to build factories and textile mills. Burley Mills was built in 1799. Armley Mills was built in 1805 and became the biggest woollen mill in the world. The old village of Burley started to disappear. As the Industrial Revolution grew, more and more and more terraced houses were built for the factory workers and their families. Life in Victorian Burley could be tough. The factories were dirty and noisy and sometimes dangerous. Even little children worked in the textile mills. Houses had no bathrooms and the toilets were outside, shared by two or more families. Many people died of diseases such as polio, typhoid or cholera. But throughout the 19th century, gradually things changed. Rosebank Primary School was built in the 1870s. Burley's famous allotments were opened in 1892 so that local people could grow good food for their families. Burley Park was created in 1899 for families to use and enjoy all year round. By 1900, Burley was a busy place, full of people, shops and houses, and surrounded by factories. But life for most people was not easy. Housing was still overcrowded, and there was a lot of poverty. Transport changed, and from 1901, electric trams connected to Leeds city centre. After the First World War, some of the old slums were demolished. Old terraced houses were replaced by more modern houses and shops. Burley Library was opened in 1926. Older residents can still remember local houses being bombed in the Second World War. Things have changed a lot since the 1950s. More of the old houses and factories have gone. Trams have been replaced by cars and buses. New houses have been built. New landmarks have been created. Burley has become home to people from all around the world who have come to live and work in Leeds, bringing their families with them. Many of the old mills and factories have closed. Old shops have gone. But new shops and restaurants have opened to meet the needs of new people. All this makes Burley an interesting and vibrant place to live. We have been interviewing residents about how Burley has changed. These are the stories. I was 10 years old when I came to this country, so I remember it quite well. I was born in a place called Vazirabad in Pakistan. I was quite sad to leave because uh, <coughs> my mother had died the year before and I was leaving all my family and coming to a different country far away. I have lived in and around Burley for almost 32 years. I came to live in Burley in 1981 when I bought a house in Burley when I started my first proper job uh, working at uh, Leeds Infirmary at the hospital. Well I was born in uh, Kirkstall, Kirkstall Road, <coughs> excuse me, in a, a little cottage uh, and there was a mill, uh, a woollen mill quite close by. I was five years old when we moved to Burley 
I've lived in Burley um, on and off for about 35 years in different houses. I was born in the Caribbean island of Jamaica. It's a sunny island and uh, palm trees and white sands and cool breeze. I lived in Burley for about 25 years. I was born in India. I'm living here in Burley around two years. I have lived here about 60 years. I have lived in Burley 22 years. The family, my family and I, we were all evacuated to Leeds from Surrey. Um, and that is why we ended, in, ended up here in Burley. After the war, you had to find a house of your own. So my mum and dad found this house in Woodsley Road. But we weren't there very long because it was more or less derelict and my sister became ill with TB. I lived with my uh, brother, two brothers. We lived in a through terrace house down Hyde Park Road. Uh, the kind of house we lived in at first was very, very basic. Uh, we had a toilet at the bottom of the garden and uh, only two bedrooms and there were six of us. So it was quite, uh, quite cramped. Cardigan Gardens, <laughs> that's the street I used to live on. And uh, it was a, a large tailoring firm then at, at the time. It's, it's defunct now. When I, when I had to give my address to people, they used to say that people away from, from Leeds, because I had friends, you know, in different parts of England, they used to remark on my address, how oh, nice sounding it was. There was no bath. If you needed a bath, you had to go to the public baths. And there was no washing machine then. People had to do the washing by hand. I can remember the people taking their washing down to the swimming baths. You know where the swimming baths are on Kersal Road? They used to put them, we didn't, we were very posh, we must have had a washing machine. Um, they used to put them in a big bag, and it was called a bag wash, and all this washing was just washed in one go, and then they gave you this, they must have dried it a bit, and then gave you it back. And people used to go and get a hot bath there, because they'd no baths in their houses, and they used to go down there to have a bath. It wasn't in with the washing. <laughs> Where we lived, we lived in Spring Street West, and it was one up and one down. So you'd like a family of four in one bedroom. So you separated it with curtains. Then you did outside toilets, which was about five, uh, like a passageway with five on one side and five on another. And each neighbour <coughs> took it in turns every weekend to clean the toilets. It was nice. It was very pleasant. Everybody was nice to one another. It was uh, very friendly and communal, you know, everybody knew each other and they used to help each other quite a lot. I was here as a pupil in about 19... Oh, 45, 46. I recognise a couple of the classrooms where you go in the front door here and up the stairs. In between the classrooms, this part, I would think, used to be shelters what was there, as I'm assuming, from the war. We used to have to go down to a school on Kurtzell Road, Kurtzell Road, Willow Road, Willow Road, somewhere there. And we used to have to go across there for our lunchtime. We used to argue with the children that used to go to that school. I think it was a Catholic school. And we used to call them names and they used to call us names. <laughs> that I can remember as well. Not very nice. <laughs> I went to school at Kurtzell Road School and uh, I went there when I was five and I finished when I was 14. My favourite things at school was the art. PE, we did physical exercise. Up on the roof, we had a roof there as well. And then downstairs, we had um, a, a, a domestic science department where we washed clothes and ironed them. And then we had a cookery department as well where we baked. That was just on a Friday. I love the school. The children here are lovely. They're really receptive and uh, they're just a pleasure to teach. We used to play 
with uh, hula hoops, uh, whipping tops. Uh, we used to play um, kick ball kick. If we hadn't a ball, we kick a can. And then we used to go hide <coughs> excuse me, in people's gardens. And they didn't bother in those days. Like whipping top or like skipping? Don't do a whipping top now, do you? And you have a whip and you spin it round and whip it till it keeps going for ages. I used to love playing the whipping top. It, it, it used to play it for ages and ages. I remember the Woodhouse Moor. We used to go up onto the moor. Um, that was quite nice. They used to be, I, they always be, the um, fun fair always came there once a year and we used to go to that. And my mum and dad used to always take us walks down by the canal. We used to walk many a Sunday night along the canal where the old barges used to be. I used to play cards with my mother and father and my two brothers. I used to like to go on a bike, I used to go on a bike a bit. You didn't always go out when you got to about 15 then on your own and stuff, you didn't. No, you had to be in at a certain time and all that, so you didn't go a lot of places. I used to, as a child, um, used to play out in the back streets, especially in the back streets, there were no cars were going to go there. On the whole of our road, I think there was about three cars at the most. And now it's, you know, you can't find a parking space now. We used to go to the Hyde Park pictures and there used to be one on Burley Road. They used to call it Burley Bugutch. Well, the cinemas were different, uh, yes, because there were there were proper proper cinemas, and we had the Haddon Hall Cinema in Burley, which was quite good. But it, well, it was old fashioned, I suppose. They had um, moose's heads round the uh, the walls and um, big blue dinner plates all round as well. I remember they had um, uh, Birth of a Baby there. And um, the men didn't like that, really, because they had to have the St John's Ambulance standing by because the men used to faint. Yes, I used to go to Hyde Park Cinema quite a lot. Uh, they used to show a lot of Bolly, Bollywood films. It was just coppers. It was quite cheap to go, go in there, I think. It'd be about a shilling or something like that. Well, the Hyde Park Cinema has been there um, a long, long time. I remember the first time I went there, they had, um, I think they had a little balcony and they had seats on the side, which I'd, no other cinema had in those days. And, um, and, and if you looked, you had, to, you had to look sideways at the film because the seats were on the side. I go to the uh, library. The library is important because it takes you back in time. It, you could then see the contrast of what it was then to what it was now. You get both sides of the picture, the advancement and the brilliance and the, the poverty that existed at that time. In shops, we didn't have as much choice. It was just basics really you know we, we didn't have a lot of uh, choice like they do now in supermarkets but uh, there were more little corner shops we used to have absolutely loads of shops yes all day but then, little, little, little i mean when you're up top of every street yeah no supermarkets you walk on Hardy, haven't you up top of every street there, there was all... there was two shops one at the yes. top of each one i used to come to a shoe shop in burley uh, a little corner shop it was because for um, pumps and that for my two children because they were so cheap you couldn't buy them anywhere else and people used to tell one another because in them days uh, if you saved a penny it was wonderful. Well on Burley Road, uh, Burley Lodge Road it used to be very good but then they stopped made it a play street and all the shops died off then because the cars couldn't get along. All the little back to back, little tiny corner shops have disappeared, and there's restaurants and cafes and um, everywhere just students and shops, really. Oh, we had, yes, the factories, we had a lot of factories. We had the Paul's Tannery on Kirtsler Road as well, which really, really smelt on a hot summer's day. It was 
you know, where the, the tan leather. And we had uh, associated dairies and uh, the screw works. We had the screw works. I think that's still there. So, uh, and uh, with quite a lot of industry, you know, around that area. I worked at a printer's when I left school. It was good. We used to do papers, you know, pack papers up and magazines. The factory isn't there now where my mother worked. She worked at, used to make shoulder pads for clothes, but it's not there now. It was quite big though, because mm-hmm. when it that finished, it went to be a gym then, but it's not that now. Block mm-hmm. of flats now. My mother worked in a mill, uh, a woolen mill. She was a burler and a mender. She used to pick the little floors out of the cloth as it came along, and that was her job. I worked as a printer at Cardigan Road. I went into but they've pulled it down now. There's a new block of flats there. Yeah. Do you remember? Right yes, opposite I do remember, Park. Yes. Mm. And uh, but I worked at Westfield Clothing Factory for fifteen. Because mm-hmm. as soon as I left school, my mum said, "Right, you're going to get a job," and she'd take you for a job, get you a job. I think it closed down. In my mind, I can see all, when I walk on Burnley Road, which happened that I can, all this comes in vision. You can I can just see it all. The streets at that time, time was made of cobbles, cobblestones, and people used to hang the washings across the road on a line. And if a, if a awesome carts came along the road, they had to all come out from their houses and take the washing down so that the, 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 this awesome cart could, could, could come along and then they would, at this part, they come and put the washing back up, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. During the war, we, um, we had a little uh, bombing incident, and uh, my brother was home on leave from the Navy, and we heard this terrific crash, and um, my brother ran upstairs, he thought our house had been hit, but it was the house opposite, and the drops an incendiary bomb, a fire bomb. And, uh, and the daughter of the house shinned up a ladder and, and put the fire out all by herself. She was only young. So, uh, so we escaped that night. I remember when the sirens used to start, my mum would take us down in the cellar. We used to go up for my granny, used to creep up the side. It's gone. I'm going up to my granny to bring my granny down. And there's be trapped and falling all around me. And I used to slide up at the side of the walls at the streets until I got up to my granny's house. And, Bring her down to my mum's house to get down in the cellar. And the first time the, the air raid siren went off, we were all terribly excited. And we sat there sleeping, kept dozing off. We were laid down, mum was sat on this chair. All of a sudden, they were, oh my gosh, I'll never forget it. The house shook and it was a heavy house. It wasn't like the, the building today, it was really strong. And it, the vibration in the wall. Everybody seemed to move. My mum says, good heavens, where's that? Anyway, we went to school on the Monday. Well, the teacher said to me, Jean, you haven't got a pencil box, have you? A sliding lid, you know, the wooden type. So uh, I said, I've never had a pencil box. She said, well, you can have this one. And then it suddenly funny feeling in my tummy. And I'll never forget that day. I said, uh, well, whose is it? She said, it's Noreen's. So I said, well, why doesn't Noreen want it? She said she were killed in the raid on Friday with her mum and dad. And fancy that, just like somebody hit me over the head. And, oh, I said, I had no idea that she got killed. A year old. And that was the first, first sign, first frightening bit of the war. I didn't go to a place of worship not very often. I didn't go very often, sometimes on a Sunday. And sometimes I used to go to Sunday school. Oh, it was um, St Matthias Church on, on Burley Road. And I was, I was christened there. My mother and father were married there. And I was christened there. And so were my brothers and sister. I don't think we went to church. 
Oh, yes, we did now, I remember. There was a church almost next door to where we lived in Woodsley Road. I, th I don't know whether it's still there. There was a big church, and I can remember going there, and I enjoyed that. I mean, I go, well, both of us go, to St Matthias Church up the road here. And since we've been going there, which is over two years now, we've met such a lot of burly people, and they're so friendly. When I was little, we used to attend the, what is now Med Medina Mosque. There were only a few Asian families here at the time. There, there weren't many Asian families. I think in our street there was, I think there was just our family, to be honest, and another family right at the end. So there weren't very many families over here, and we used to go there every evening to learn to read the Quran. So it was a house that the, the people in the community got together to, to and bought it as a to be used as a place of worship. And then as more and more families came into the area, it, it just... It just was too small to accommodate the number of worshippers. And now we have this fantastic three-storey um, purpose-built mosque with the dome and minarets. The Grand Mosque, the Grand Jami Mosque uh, on Woodsley Road was actually a church at one time and I remember it well. When I first moved here, the area wasn't that different physically though it was run down, uh, but the population, the, the people who used to live here, they're, they're quite different to the people who live here now. There were fewer Asian people here, there were lots of white people, uh, and, uh, and also quite a lot of uh, people of West Indian origin. We've got a, a few um, new houses. They've built Leeds Federated Housing, which was uh, not there before. They've built a lot of uh, student accommodation, student flats, which were not here. Uh, it was all de derelict buildings or uh, shops that were closing. A lot of the uh, people of West, uh, West Indies origins have moved out. A lot of the white people have moved out and obviously the people who moved into the area, uh, more Asian and uh, from both uh, uh, Indian and Pakistani background, but mostly from Kashmir. It's the community that makes Burley. It's made up of so many different nationalities and faiths, but everybody gets on. We don't have uh, much racial tension in the area, and uh, I think it's a, just a lovely community to work with. Have you heard anything wrong no, about the burly people? No, no. They always, wherever you go, in any a party or something going on at church, they always bring the burly people into it, and it's quite, it's quite nice, yeah. really. I haven't heard anything wrong at all. I think Burley is a fantastic place to live in. It may not be the poshest place with detached houses and. Um, people with fancy cars, but it is a wonderful place to live in. And as a child, I remember, you know, there were there were people of different colours living on the same street, and we all lived happily together, and we all played together as children. And even now, I mean, there's, if anything, the variety of cultures, faiths living in this community. There's a much more variety; the numbers have increased and it's still a lovely place to live in and we still all live together as friends. Rosebank Primary School has over 270 pupils whose families come from all over the world. We speak over 30 languages including English, Arabic, Hindi, Urdu, Punjabi, Telugu, Malaysia, French, Gujarati, Polish. We are proud of the Bible School and proud of the Burley. We hope you like it too. Three cheers for the Burley champions. Hip it hooray! Hip it hooray! Hip it hooray! We would like to thank the oral history interviewees. The project partners. The project team. 
to parents and volunteers of Fuzzbunk Primary School. With special thanks to... And all the Burley Champions!